So this one. So Kim.com. Kim.com, he's he was a internet pioneer, made a lot of difference. Uh, I think it was on file share or share something where he was like one of those gurus when he when the internet really started to really come in into light and it was a file sharing platform. And he's been around forever and he's been a big proponent of cryptocurrency, but not so much crypto, but more recently Bitcoin Cash. He's been talking about Bitcoin Cash for quite some time. And he has a thesis and it makes a lot of sense. And he says, look, people don't want to pay a ton of money for transactions that are super high and are super slow. So if you look at Bitcoin, uh, that checks off those marks. Also, if you look at Ethereum, that's the same type of thing. And I know people talk about, well, second layer solutions. We'll get to that. So this is just an interesting piece, I thought. I just bring it to your attention. So he explains how fees in the Bitcoin network are both unreliable and unsustainable for certain payments. He says this, try and buy a soda with Bitcoin. Uh, the median fee is nine bucks, 892. And Bitcoin cash median fee is 0 0.001. Pretty good, let's be honest, right? If you wanna pay for something like that, and it's, you, you can either pay nine bucks or a fraction of a penny, I think you go for a fraction of a penny. And he says, this is a statistic I've never heard of. It makes sense though. Over half of all cash payments worldwide are under 10 bucks. And Bitcoin Cash is just serving the mass market. And I totally agree with them. In 2017, Bitcoin fees jumped over $50 per transaction. I don't know if you were around that time, but everybody was really getting into Bitcoin, really getting into cryptocurrency. I mean, really getting into it. That's when I got in. And uh, those transaction fees were crazy. And the, and the wait time was like exorbitant. So I will not say that he is not wrong here. He's exactly right. It was crazy. And that was in 2017. Now imagine all the different things we have now. People trying to use Bitcoin to buy stuff. Oof. And then Elon Musk just said, it's a fair point. And uh, you just, you got to tip your hat and go, yeah, that's right. I mean, even Elon Musk is like, he knows a lot. I mean, he's, he knows a pretty good amount about what's going on with Bitcoin. Even he's like, you know what? It makes a lot of sense. And then people, of course, you sitting there, maybe you love Bitcoin. I like Bitcoin, but I don't think it's going to be used for payments. And people will start to talk about, well, the Lightning Network. <laughs> like, Every time I hear something about like Bitcoin being used for payments, it's always Lightning Network. Well, you got to wait, Lightning Network, and then there's Lightning Network. And uh, sure, but no one's really using this for payments. No one is. So um, it just states, the guy states again, custodial solutions like Lightning are not changing our broken system. And he says, transaction fees, speed, and security matters most. That's why I prefer Bitcoin Cash. It can be both a store of value and, and electronic cash envisioned by Satoshi. And then finally, does say, say, say this, users must control the keys to the digital money, not third parties. So let me just say this. So when people, if you're new to, to the space, just realize that when Bitcoin first came out, 2009's Toshi Nakamoto white paper, it was all about using it for payments. And it was used for payments because it was pretty easy because there wasn't a lot of, many, lot, not too many people were actually using it. Then when you started to get uh, network congestion, and I don't think Satoshi looked at it like this is going to be a world reserve currency. He just said, you know, let's just use this for payments amongst us and, uh, you know, we'll see how it grows. Well, when it grows too, too much and too fast and you have these, uh, these block size limits, then it really does uh, play a part. And then all of a sudden the fees become high, the speed becomes very slow, and it just becomes unusable as a payment system. That's why you hear the narrative that Bitcoin is a store of value or gold 2.0, whatever you want to call it. So in that regard, I think that is what it is going to be, a store of value. I don't see, like gold is a store of value, right? No one is using their gold bouillon or their little gold nuggets and going over to Circle K and saying, hey, give me a, a cup of coffee. Here's clink. And then, you know, they pay for it with gold. It doesn't happen. It's just a store of value. And that's what Bitcoin can be. I don't think it can be used for payments. But again, I could be totally wrong. Bitcoin cash could be used for payments. Uh, I own some Bitcoin Cash. Again, super biased on this channel. Everything I talk about, it's because I'm biased. And uh, so I own a little Bitcoin Cash. I own a little bit of Bitcoin. I own a little bit of this and that. So I think, sure, why doesn't why can't Bitcoin just be the store of value and just say, we'll take that title? And why can't Bitcoin Cash just go, okay, we'll be used for payments and we'll take that title or whoever wants to you know claim that title? I just don't see the whole, the whole big issue. So... Um, that's really it for that. I just want to bring it to your attention about these are the types of things that are going on. And uh, I just see Bitcoin as store of value. Bitcoin Cash can be used for, for payments. And there's a lot of different other things to be used. Luna could be used for payments. Uh, you have XRP could be used for payments. So who's going to win that battle? 
uh, I have no idea. Let me know what you think in the comments section. Let's move on to our last piece.